Have you ever found yourself struggling to complete a task that should have taken just a couple of hours, but instead, after eight hours of hard work, you still haven't finished yet? There's a reason behind that and a simple solution for this problem. In this video, I'm going to share 10 actionable steps which I've used to get more done in less time. The first five steps are focus, concentration related, and the last five are more technical design engineering related. So these are steps that I got from books and podcasts, and I tried myself, and I can guarantee you that they will change your life. So let's get started. Focus is our most valuable asset. It's what determines how productive and effective we are using our time. At work, you're not getting paid for your time. You're getting paid for how present and focused you are. So hack number one is to stop multitasking. From personal experience, we're not built to multitask. If your task is to design a house, set a block of time to design that house nothing else. Put your headphones on and get into the zone. To master your focus, you need to understand where it's being stolen from you. Focus is energy. So habit number two is to create a focus journal to track what you do and how long you do it throughout the day. This will reveal where you're wasting time and leaking attention. So here's an actionable step for you. Set your alarm for every hour of the day and every time your alarm goes off, write down what you have done over the past hour. If you had a 15 minutes call with a builder to solve a problem and you had to send an email, write that down. If you had to stop 20 minutes to teach a graduate student, write that down. If you went to the toilet and scrolled on social media for five minutes, write that down. Just don't show that to your manager. Do that for a couple of days or a week until you figure out where your attention and energy is going to. And this is important because life is like a video game and we are the main character. So you have an energy bar for every day of your life and at every activity or time passed, your energy bar reduces. So we should be aware of where and on what our energy is being spent and perform the most important activities of the day when your energy bar is high. So hack number three is to prioritize self-care. So the three pillars of your productivity at work are sleep, exercise, and nutrition. And why I'm saying those obvious things? Because energy is the fuel that powers your focus. Right? No energy, no focus. And you can only be energetic if you sleep well, exercise, and eat healthy. This might sound cliche, or I might sound like a productivity guru, but this has become very relevant to me since I've been working for myself. There is a fridge full of food right next to my table, and the urge to open the fridge and get a snack every hour or so is incredibly high. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of dieting. You can be vegetarian, keto, carnivore, whatever cult you want to follow. The only thing I found that works very well for myself is to reduce sugar and carbohydrates to avoid that sugar crash in the middle of the day. When it comes to exercise, I do all sorts of things. I go to the gym, I do yoga, I do jujitsu, I surf. You choose whatever activity or sport makes you happy and try to have from six to eight hours of sleep every night. So hack number four, create a second brain and set clear priorities. As I said before about multitasking, your brain can only juggle so many thoughts at a time. So if I'm in the middle of a task and I remember that I had to send an email or amend some drawings, I will write that down on my iPad and keep going until I finish that task so that I don't lose focus. And that ties very nicely into setting clear priorities. So write down a list of tasks or goals you have to complete for the day in order of importance and get them done first when your energy levels are high. Hack number five, just like your biceps.
Focus is also a muscle that requires regular exercise. So engage in daily thinking time practice like journaling, meditating, or going for walks. And that's going to strengthen your focus and improve the clarity of your thoughts. So to show you that I'm not bullshitting you, I've got a folder called Lessons Learned in Engineering. And I've got this since I was a graduate engineer. So I write down everything I learned and all the lessons, all the mistakes that I made. I've got everything here, you know, written in my journal. And I also have a folder called Journaling where I've got, you know, all my personal, personal life and everything that happens in my life. I just journal and write down everything. It's not as consistent as I would like to. I try to do my best. And you know, it's hard to talk about those things like meditation and journaling because it's very easy to do it for a couple of days and then fall back into, into your old habits. And I have in my calendar 15 minutes of meditation every day. It's only 15 minutes and I miss it many days. However, the days I do it, it definitely improves the clarity of my thoughts. So if you want to give it a try, let me know how you go in the comments and I think you will benefit from that a lot. Now moving to a more design engineering related hacks. Number six, never start a project without knowing the budget. Embarking on a project without a clear budget is like sailing a ship without a map. It's risky and could lead to financial disaster. And here are the steps you can implement. Number one, find out the budget. Number two, know your hourly rate and the rate of whoever else is working on the project. Number three, divide the budget by the hourly rate. For example, the budget is $10,000. The drafting team said they need 20 hours to complete the project. The hourly rate of the drafter is $100 so 20 times 100 equals $2,000. You've got $8,000 left to work with. 8,000 divided by your hourly rate, let's say $180 per hour, you've got around 40 hours to complete the project. If you stick to the budget or finish your design under the budget, the company is a profitable business. A profitable business has more money coming in and higher the chances this money will be distributed among the team or go straight to your boss bank account. Hack number seven, track your progress. This ties back to hack number two, which is to track what you do and for how long you do it throughout the day. These will reveal where you're wasting time and where you need to improve. So in our previous example, you had a budget of $10,000 and 40 hours to complete the project. So divide those 40 hours into smaller tasks. For example, getting your head around the project, understanding the requirements, asking and answering questions, and let's say time spent talking to the architect and builder. Let's address five hours to this activity. Drawing the engineering layout, another five hours. Sizing the members, 10 hours, designing connections, 20 hours. So now you have a clear understanding of where your energy will be focused. You can take it a step further, as I explained in hack number two, by monitoring every hour of your day to ensure you stay on course. So while tracking every hour can get overwhelming, I believe it's worth doing for projects outside your experience. Consider doing it for at least a day or two. Hack number eight, start right. Before you begin sketching anything, make sure you understand the requirements of the project. Some clients have preferred materials and construction methods that you should follow on your design. For instance, the requirements of a volume builder are very different from the requirements of a project home builder. Or maybe there is a specific type of material or timber species that it's not available where the construction site is located, or it's a prefabricated structure that has to be transported through different states which have different rules and limits for transportation size. I'm just giving you random examples to make sure that you understand very well that because I have made these mistakes in the past and I lost countless of work hours having to redesign things that could have been known if I had asked a simple question before starting the design. Hack number nine, look at the big 
picture first. So before you start designing suspended slabs, beams, columns, walls, make sure the global system is stable. Make sure you are happy with the layout the architect has given to you. There's no point in designing all the members to only realize in the end that you need more walls or bracings or even change the layout to make the project more economical. Doing so will allow you to discuss changes in the layout right from the beginning and it will save you time in the end. And lastly, number 10, get the habit of sketching details. Your brain likes pictures and it's really good at remembering them. As the neuroscientist John Medina said, here a piece of information and three days later you will remember 10% of it. Add a picture and you will remember 65%. This highlights the importance of incorporating visuals into your learning process. Imagine I'm trying to explain how a connection works, but you have no visual reference for it. Without an image or drawing, comprehending and retaining the concept becomes significantly more challenging. So make sure you sketch and draw everything you do. To wrap up this video, I just wanted to say that I've compiled this list not only to assist you, but also to help in my own personal growth because I need a lot of these improvements in many areas of my life and creating these videos make me accountable to stick to this habit. So if you have any positive habits that you found beneficial and you would like to share please feel free to do so in the comment section and if you want to know how the day in the life of a self-employed structural engineer in Australia looks like watch this video here and I'll see you there